Greetings folks, welcome back to my little corner of the library. Today we're doing a sort of companion video to the one we did earlier in the week on Bannerman's Island Arsenal. This is five things you probably didn't know about Palapel Island. Thing number one, the Heer of Dunderberg. Now Dunderberg Mountain is the southern gate, if you will, of the Hudson Highlands. The name itself is Dutch, translating as Thunder Mountain, Dunder, Thunder, and Berg, Mountain. The reason for the name is that during thunderstorms, the th sound of the thunder would echo so violently back and forth between the various peaks of the Hudson Highlands that it would scare sailors, making the storm seem exponentially bigger than it actually was. Now, the Hudson Highlands are a difficult place to navigate by ship even during calm weather, let alone when the weather was nasty. Thus began the legend of the Heer of Dunderberg, a devious sprite or imp who would conjure up uh, terrible storms uh, as ships were sailing up the highlands, attempting to cause them to wreck on the rocks. Palapel Island was seen as being a beacon of hope, the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will, for any ships sailing up the highlands. Dunderberg Mountain was where they would go into the highlands, and Palapel Island is where they would uh, exit the highlands, now uh, safe from the Heer's wrath. Washington Irving himself, writing as Geoffrey Crayon, even took this legend to heart in his short story called The Storm Ship, which he published in a collection called Brace Bridge Hall, or The Humorists. Thing number two. Palapel Island was seen by the uh, colonists as being an important point of defense against the British during the American Revolution. Captain Thomas Mockin, who would later go on uh, to achieve some level of notoriety for his work on the West Point chain, would sink a line of chevaux de frise from Palapel Island west across the Hudson River to Plum Point. Now, chevaux de frise are large wooden boxes composed of logs, usually about 15 or 20 feet across on, on each side, they would then be filled with rocks and sunk to the bottom of a body of water. Out of these boxes would come other large logs about 30 feet long that would be tipped with iron points. Now the idea is that any ships sailing uh, over these uh, chevaux de frise, the iron points would puncture their hulls or cause damage to the hulls, thus uh, either sinking or just damaging beyond uh, usefulness the, uh, the ship itself. Unfortunately for the colonists, it seems that the line of chevaux de frise, if it was ever completed at all, was fairly ineffective. And there are various theories uh, going back and forth, uh, whether it was just uh, poor design, poor placement, or uh, outright treachery that uh, caused the chevaux de frise to be so, uh, so useless against the British. Now only one of the points of the chevaux de frise uh, of Palapel Island have ever been recovered. It was fished out of the river in 1836 and currently resides in Newburgh, New York at the Washington's Headquarters State Historic Site. Thing number three. Palapel Island was the site of a proposed revolutionary prison. George Washington in 1781 actually approved plans for a prison to be constructed on Palapel Island for prisoners of war. The construction was started, but there's no evidence that it was ever completed. However, there is a stone wall on the south side of Palapel Island indicating where construction had once began. Thing number four. Matthew Vassar, a local brewer who had accumulated uh, quite a substantial fortune, attempted to buy Palapel Island in the mid-19th century. His idea was to mount a memorial to Henry Hudson on the island. Unfortunately, due to insufficient funds, interest in the project soon waned, and Vassar took the money instead and founded Vassar College. Thing number five. Prior to Bannerman's purchase of the island, Palapel was notorious in local circles for its ties to bootlegging. Bootleggers would meet on the island and sell their wares there in an attempt to avoid paying taxes on them. There were also rumors of prostitution. In 1888, Mary G. Taft purchased the island in an attempt to shut down any such illegal and immoral activities. Now, Mrs. Taft, a staunch prohibitionist, actually included a rider in the deed in the bill of sale of Palapel Island to Francis Bannerman VI that he never used the island for the manufacture or distribution of alcohol. Well, that's all we've got for you today, just a couple trivia items. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. Hit that subscribe button on the way out the door to stay up to date on all of our uh, latest videos. I do hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.